This is my fifth visit to Zimbabwe. I look forward to five more if Jesus does not come. I really mean that. In 212, I was in Mount Pleasant. In 215, in Gweru. In 217, Harare. February last month, in Mutare. And now, I am here. And I am privileged, and I thank God. Now, I'll be very direct with you, sometimes blunt, but always lovingly blunt. Are you with me? So when you leave, you don't have to guess what did he say. All right, let's pray. Father, remind me at all times I am here to represent you. And by speaking the truth, to glorify your name and to be a blessing to your blessed, beautiful young men and young women. Touch their lives, dear God. Help them where they need your help, and that is everywhere. Father, reserve your sweetest blessing today for our guests. We are happy to have them, Father, and hasten to they when they will no longer be guests but one of us. Bless them, bless their families, heal the diseases, dear God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. How many of you are in school of any kind? Raise your hands. You, okay, okay, all right. We have a population of students. Let us go to Proverbs 1. Mr. Cameraman, forgive me for taxing your skills. I'm just moving around a little bit to see if it'll keep me cool. You can see I am hot. But you have to be alive to feel hot. Can you say amen? I've never met a dead man who felt hot. And so I'm not really complaining. What book did I say? What chapter? Let's read verse uh, 7, Proverbs 1. What does that say? The fear of the Lord? Stop. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. In other words, your pursuit of education should begin with the fact there is a God. Let me tell you something about this God. Go to Genesis 1 as quickly as you can. You should not have a difficulty finding Genesis 1. Do you have it? All right. Let's read from first one of Genesis 1. Where is Kimberly? She's my boss. When do I stop, Kimberly? What? What did she say? I sing, I don't get it. Okay, 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 okay. Genesis 1, reading from verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, for those of you who study astronomy. And divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. God saw that it was good. Everything God made was good. We have the dry land. You study agriculture. The sea, you study marine biology. Verse 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so, and the earth brought forth grass, an herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day for those of you studying botany. 
And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so for those of you studying cosmology. How to harness the energy of the sun. How to protect us from the harmful rays that come from space. Let's skip to verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. In the evening and the morning, with the fifth day, to those of you studying ichthyology, what is ichthyology? Study a fish, or you study birds, or you study aviation, it's built on the principles of flight. Verse 24, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. You study zoology. Hmm? You study, even if it's entomology, insects. You study meteorology, the weather. Now, listen to Proverbs 1, 7 again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now, let's say you're studying accounting. What does the Bible say? Bring you all the tithe into the storehouse. They may meet in my house. On this side of the ledger is God tithe. In this column, the offering. Over here, what he has allowed you to keep for your expenses. You study from the, the entire alphabet of knowledge, from anthropology or accounting to zoology. It all begins with recognizing God. I just spoke to a group upstairs, some of them studying medicine. And I asked one of them, what are the 12 cranial nerves? And he ran them off to me. God is the creator. Let's go to Exodus 4. I'll give you a text I gave them. Exodus 4, 10 and 11, as quickly as you can. I have 25 minutes, I think. But it doesn't take God long to bless you with some revelation. It doesn't take long. What book did I say? What chapter? Verses 10 and 11. And Moses said unto God, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. That was his problem. And the Lord said unto him, verse 11, Who hath made man's mouth? For you speech pathologists or otorhinolaryngologists, who hath made man's mouth? Go to Psalm 94. Let's read verse 9 as quickly as you can. Psalm 94, reading verse 9. We're talking to people in school. When you understand where your education should be founded, it makes a difference in your experience in school. Psalm 94, verse 9. When you found it, say amen. amen. He that planted the ear shall he not hear and he that formed the eye shall he not see in exodus 4 verse 11 god said who hath made man's mouth your dentist uh -huh. psalm 94 verse 9 i planted the ear audiology i formed the eye ophthalmology optometry God is the creator of every source of legitimate knowledge. What's the key word I used just now? Let me give you the statement again. God is the source of every legitimate branch of knowledge. What's the key word? Legitimate. Because sin is a branch of knowledge. And God is not the originator of that. 
So the fear of the Lord is not the beginning of sin. Every legitimate branch of knowledge begins with God. God is the source. He is the headwaters of the Nile of knowledge. Are you following me? Then when you're studying, first, you should not be pursuing a grade. What should you be pursuing? The knowledge, come on, of God. You look at me as though I need medication. I don't need it, I don't take medication. Listen to me again. If you want to change your view of education and studying, see it as a pursuit of the knowledge of God. The grades will come. And so you're studying anatomy, or you're studying whatever, physiology, biochemistry, histology, pathology, neurology, whatever it is. Where is God's fingerprint in this? You see, God is a creator. An artist is a creator. Am I right, yes or no? Now, if you study art, you can identify this painting was by Monet. This is Picasso. This is, uh, this is Michelangelo. You can tell by the brush strokes. If you are a musician, you listen to a piece, ah, Mozart. You can tell. You listen, ah, Mendelssohn. Or someone from Zimbabwe. Tinashe. <laughs> Kudakwashe. He is the creator of this piece of music. Why? Everything created bears the fingerprint of the creator. You read a poem. This is Shakespeare. This is Milton, the style. This is Lord Byron. Ah, this is John Keats. Or this is Sole Woyinka. Are you with me? For you Nigerians. Creation has God's fingerprint. And since God created heaven and earth, every branch of knowledge that has to do with heaven and earth carries the fingerprint of God. So that at the highest level and the most profound depth, education is the pursuit of a knowledge of God. When you do that, studying becomes an adventure, not a chore. I am looking for God. Even if you study languages, it is God who confused, and uh, uh, we have all these languages. Whatever you study, except sin, the source is God. If you study sociology, was it not God that put Adam and Eve together, yes or no? Yes. All right, let me ask, any of you in college, anyone in college, or are you all in high school? No? Who's in college? What are you studying? What? Agricultural engineering. Never heard of it. What does an agricultural engineer do? Build trees? What do you do? I didn't hear what you said, but okay. What are you studying? Ah, computer engineering, okay. What are you studying? You're not in college? Okay. What are you studying? What? Cloud computing. Okay. Whatever it is you're studying, look for indications and evidence of God. For instance, when God made the birds, he first made the firmament so the birds can have somewhere to fly. In order for a bird to fly, there must be laws of flight. Are you with me? So if you're studying to be a commercial pilot and you're studying the laws of flight, look for God. If you're studying oceanography, how to build submarines, they are based on fish. You study the laws of an object moving through a liquid. 
God. Now let me say something extreme. If you adopt this approach, then study education is an act of worship. Is this microphone working? Okay. Education is an act of worship. By the way, let me get into your business. Did God create the body, yes or no? Yes. Dress should be an act of worship. Are you making up your minds whether to say amen or not? <laughs> Dress should be a form of worship. What do I mean? It is a form of acknowledging that you're not your own, you were made by God. God told Moses, who hath made man's mouth? That's where we eat. Hmm? What did God tell Jeremiah? In Jeremiah 1, 5, 4 and 5, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Mm -hmm. Then God made the internal organs. Did God make the stomach, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Then eating should be a form of worship. You may have to change your diet, having heard what I just said. No more oysters, no more crabs, no more snakes. Eating is a form of worship. Dress is a form of worship. Let me go one level deeper in extremity. When you acknowledge God, life is an ongoing act of worship. When you understand that, then you see church differently. I don't come to church to worship. I've been worshiping all week. I come to church to fellowship with others who have been worshiping all week. Who's studying computer cloud what? Who's studying cloud formation? You? Oh, what's it, cloud what? Cla same thing, okay. Why? It was the only program? What? On offer, okay. Your reason was it was the only program on offer. Okay. Are you a Christian, yes or no? You're a child of God? You're Seventh-day Adventist? Who gave you your brain? Okay. Who gave you your good looks? Yes, but your reason for cloud whatever is because it was the only program offered. <laughs> you know what you should have said to me? Because I have seen how I can use cloud whatever to do what? Glorify God. Mm -hmm. I've seen how this community can benefit. I can do something for Mutare or Gueru, fix the roads <laughs> with cloud computing. What are you studying? You're not studying anything. What are you studying? Archi oh, architecture. Did God give Moses instructions for the building of the tabernacle? Yes or no? Yes. Did he give instructions for the building of the temple? Yes. Is God an architect? Yes. Why did you choose architecture? Don't lie. It, was it for God? Yes or no? Oh, come on. You're too good looking to lie like that. Are you sure you said for the glory of God? Are you sure? Hmm. What am I saying to those of you who have guilty looks on your faces? Your choice of study should be for the glory of God. Why? He gave you this. He gave you the health. He gave you the eyes to read. The ears to hear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but now go with me to Proverbs chapter 9 Proverbs 9 Proverbs 9 who wrote the book of Proverbs Solomon wrote most of them not all who wrote the book of Psalms David wrote most of them but not all 
Actually, Psalm 90 was written by Moses, one of the best of all the 150 powerful psalms written by Moses. Proverbs 9, we shall read verse 10. As you read 9, 10 of Proverbs, keep in mind Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now we're at Proverbs 9, verse 10. Read it loudly. The fear of the Lord, come on, is the beginning of? Ah. Well, let's see, what is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Give me a practical response. Knowledge is the, uh, you're in school now, what are you doing? You are taking in. You are accumulating as you look for God. You are taking in, accumulating knowledge. Now, wisdom is the way you apply, is the outflow of that knowledge. First, for the glory of God and for the benefit of your fellow man, your fellow woman. Let me say that again. You're in school, you're receiving knowledge. As you process it, you look for God. You leave school, even before you leave school, how do I apply what I have learned? That's wisdom. Now, if that's the case, go to James chapter 1. Let's read verse 5. James 1, verse 5. Do you have James 1 verse 5? James was the brother of Jesus Christ. There was another brother of Christ who wrote the book of the Bible. What was his name? Jude, yes. Two brothers of Christ wrote books in the Bible, James and Jude. But it's interesting, in John chapter 7 verse 5, the Bible says that at one point his family did not believe in him. At some point, James and Jude did not believe in their brother Christ. Why am I saying that? If you have a family member, a friend who has no interest in God, be patient. People change under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? All right. We're in James chapter 1, reading verse 5. Let me pray again. Father, as I continue speaking for you and to your people, guide my mind, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Read with me. If any lack wisdom, let him ask of God and it shall be stop now if you lack wisdom ask God but how do you think God will give it what is the beginning of wisdom the fear of the Lord well, how do you know about God Mm -hmm. yes. God dispenses wisdom through his word. Go to Psalm 32. Let's read verse 8 and read microscopically, please. Concentrate as if no one else is existing on the face of the earth. Concentrate on what you read. Psalm 32 verse 8. When you found it, say amen. Kimberly, how many minutes left? Ten. Thank you. You have Psalm 32? 32. Verse 8. Nice and loud. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Pause. Let's take that verse and put it in the classroom. Who will say these words in the classroom? The teacher. Now, when the teacher says, I will instruct thee and teach thee, what do you think he should give to you? The first day of a class, what does the teacher give you? A syllabus, an outline, and a textbook, reading material. God says, I will instruct thee and teach thee. Tell me God's textbook the Bible let me give you some good news about prioritizing God's Word the source of wisdom Christ object lessons page 123 25 paragraph 3 Christ object lessons page 125 paragraph 3 listen carefully if the believer will study the Word of God and practice it 
Give me another word for practice. Starts with an O, then a B, then an E. How many clues do you need? Then a Y. What's the word? Obey. If the follower of Christ or the believer will believe his word and practice it, to believe it, we've got to study it. There is no science in the natural world you will not be able to grasp and appreciate. Grasp, I understand. Appreciate, I connect it to God. Let me say it again for those of you studying medicine and computer, whatever. If the follower of Christ or God will believe his word and practice it, obey, there is no science. Name some areas of science that you find difficult. Chemistry, physics, come on. Biology, don't look so happy. Come on, come on. Come on, tell me. Mathematics is a science. What else? Hmm? What? G what? Geography, okay, yes. Soil science. Mm. Whatever it is, the servant of God says there is no science in the natural world. That person will not be able to grasp intellectually and appreciate spiritually. None. If now, you may say, but they're atheists who pass their courses. Yes, but there's no connection with God. So the atheist success will end when Jesus comes. Yours should take you into the next world. That's a tremendous difference. Listen to our definition of education. Listen carefully. The book Education, page 13, paragraph 1. Our ideas of education take too narrow and too low a range. There's need for broader scope, a higher aim. True education means more than the pursuit of a certain course of study. It means more than a preparation for the life that now is. It is more than that. It has to do with the whole being and with the whole period of existence possible to man. It is the harmonious development of the physical, the mental, and the spiritual powers. Listen carefully now. It prepares the student for the joy of service in this life and for the higher joy of wider service in the life to come. Whatever you're studying, if it has no connection with regard to moving to the life to come, switch. Change it. I am not joking. You know what Jesus says? What is a man profited? You can say it with me. If he gains and Let me show you the whole world. This. This is the whole world. Show me eternal life. We put all our energies into this. And ignore. Then we say, I am educated. I'm intelligent. I have a PhD in Socratic reasoning and a PhD in Aristotelian logic and a PhD in Socratic whatever but I'm only prepared for this an education that does not go beyond this is useless as you study is it contributing to your preparation for the coming of Christ or is it a detriment? Largely, whether it is or not, is not bound up in the material, but in you. What am I saying to you as your older brother? Think, why am I doing this? Why? What if I die tonight having not completed my degree in whatever? What happens when Christ comes? I don't mean to have you looking so depressed. I want you to think. Why am I doing this? I'll tell you why. Most people do it. To get a job. That pays well. 
that's the way you are raised not just in your family that's the way you raise in your society a secure life requires a good education it does not require Christ any endeavor that does not include Christ is simply an expensive waste of time and so with my five minutes left let me appeal to you genuinely in the presence of the recording angel make your education a pursuit of the knowledge of God whatever your area of study is since the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge since God created heaven and earth and every subject matter that falls within heaven and earth must originate with God then make your education a search for God if you do that you will not only succeed in this life you will be blessed in the life to come I want you quietly where you sit to say father having heard what I just heard I now dedicate my education to your glory let me say it again I want you to say right where you sit father having heard what I just heard I now to the best of my ability commit my education to your glory you cannot lose when you do that now in the few minutes I have left what will you take from this presentation raise your hand and tell me what struck you you will think about it raise a hand and tell me yes We're taught from young, a, a blessed, a successful life requires good education from a good school, not any school, a good school. Then you get a good job, get a good salary, you can buy a house and get a wife and based on your culture have two or three wives and you'll be a happy person. That's how we are even in Christian homes. Somebody else, what will you take? What struck you? Yes. Education must be and should be an act of worship. Where is God in Newton's laws? Where is God? He must be there. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. What did God say? The soul that sinneth, that's what action. Come on. It shall die. That's the reaction. Mm -hmm. Somebody else, what will you take? Yes. Say it again. If you lack wisdom, ask God. And what is God's textbook? Come on, tell me. His word. Yes. Not even the Encyclopedia Britannica. Or the Encyclopedia Harare. This is the source of God's wisdom. This is where Christ got his wisdom in his humanity. My scissors have come to threaten me, so I have to stop. One more. What? Yes. How can I make my study glorify God? There is a way. There's nothing God requires of you for which he does not make the, 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 the provision for you to do that. So that when God comes, I want all of you saved. All. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, thank you for your word. It's very simple. And the more simple it is, the more powerful it is. Thank you for my brothers and my sisters, God. Some of them are thinking right now, what change can I make? Grant them your spirit, dear God, to guide that thought process that the decisions may make. May glorify your name, bless them, and bless their fellow men and women. Bless their families, provide their tuition, heal their sicknesses, Father. And let them leave this conference changed people. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Thank you and God bless you.